Hey guys, so today I want to cover a topic that I came across in my last 2019 Dodge Charger buying guide slash update video, and that's going to be the lack of exclusivity that we're seeing with the Dodge Chargers and Challengers today. So it seems that Dodge is adding a lot of performance parts for what used to be reserved for upper models only and making them available to almost everyone. And there's also the fact that they're releasing less rare model versions or just making them more common. So for this video, kind of like a vlog, I'm just going to be rambling on about my thoughts and arguments on the topic and why I do think that some exclusivity and rarity has been lost in the past few years. So I'm going to be talking about the 2018 Super Track Pack, the 2019 new performance look, 2017 and up Daytonas, and the Challenger Demon and Hellcat Red Eye to prove my points. And make sure to let me know your thoughts on this below. Do you agree or disagree with what I say? So let's get into this discussion. First, we have to look at a brief recent history of the Charger and Challenger. So the Charger was released in 2006, and the SRTs always stood out from the rest. Different fascia, different hood, Brembo brakes, it was the top model, different from the RT, SXT, and SE below it. And every couple years, Dodge would release new variations of the model, but they would always be limited production. So to give a few examples, we saw this from 2006 to 2009, and then again in 2013 with the RT Daytona. There was the 2007 to 2009, and 2012 to 2014 Super B. In 2011, there was a Mopar 11 edition. 2013 got the SRT8 appearance package, and the list goes on, but each of these unique models added new features, and there was only between a few hundred to a few thousand of them made. Some of these cars became collector's models, and people love buying cars that they thought were rare or less common than a normal Charger, and the same goes for the Challenger. We saw cool versions like the Mopar 10 edition, 392 inaugural edition in 2011, and the Yellow Jacket in 2012. And the SRT always stood out from the rest. Fast forward to 2018, and Dodge caused a stir with their Super Track Pack on the 2018 Charger. I've already made a video on this last year when this topic first surfaced on the internet, but basically, all the models from the Daytona and up always had a different look to them, with performance fascias, side sills, rear color body spoiler, performance hood, and then 20 inch wheels of course. And from the RT and down, the models always looked a bit different, so they were more plain, and the higher end models could really stand out more. But for 2018, as I've said, you can now add this super track pack, which added all of these options, that visual options, for a price. So for the SXT Plus and SXT Plus Leather, the package cost $2,000, and for the RT, it was around $1,200. So this meant that Dodge was basically letting you turn one of these models into looking like an upper level model for only $1,000 to $2,000, depending on the model. And a lot of people were not happy with this, especially those that owned Hellcats or 392s, saying that this look should be reserved for the better models only. Now in 2019, Dodge has went even further with this concept. So there's only five models from the 2019 lineup, SXT, GT, RT, Scat Pack, and Hellcat, but now Dodge has added this performance look with the hood, fascias, performance suspension, and the bigger 20 inch wheels to come standard on every single model in the lineup except for the base SXT. I know Dodge has upgraded the Scat Pack and Hellcat to look just a bit different now with the dual air inlets and the grill, which of course the other models don't get. And don't get me wrong, these models do look badass, like the purple GT that I'm showing on screen looks really dope and will probably help Dodge sell more models, especially for the V6. But I also wonder what it will do to the exclusivity, since they do look really similar to the past 2015-2018 to SRT and 392 models. Also, when you see all these models sitting side by side on dealerships or lots and basically looking the same, to me that makes the Hellcats and Scat Packs a lot less special. And this is also the same for the Challenger, where in 2019, GTs and RTs get the hood that was only on the Hellcats for the past few years. So I wonder if this is going to be diminishing the exclusivity and making everything kind of look the same. The Charger and Challenger models always had different variations with them to distinguish them, but this is not so much the case anymore. Next up, I want to look at the Daytonas. In 2017, Dodge brought back the Daytona version of the Charger for the first time since 2013. From 2013 and before, all the Daytonas had been made in limited quantities, as you can see by the chart, and they had unique serial numbering on the dashboard, letting you know which specific one you had. But this was gone for 2017. So there was the Daytona RT with the 5.7 V8, and the Daytona 392 with the 6.4 V8. And this was not a limited quantity, Dodge made as many Daytonas as there were ordered, and this ended up being over 6,000 cars. And the Daytona continued for 2018 as well. For 2019, so this year, it looks like Dodge had removed the Daytona from the lineup, but if you actually play around with some options, you can find the Daytona Edition Group Package that cost 
This package can be applied to either the RT or the SCAT pack and basically it will turn either of those models into the Daytona from last year. So if you order the RT plus the Daytona Edition group, you pretty much have an RT Daytona and the same goes for the SCAT pack, the Daytona Edition group turns it into a Daytona 392. The package adds all the same Daytona details as the last two years, same wheels that those cars had, same black spoiler, black decals on the hood, roof and trunk, Daytona front grille badge, Daytona Napa Alcantara seats, a Mopar cold air intake, and some other features. So this means that you don't even have to pick out the Daytona model specifically, you can just add it if you want to. Anyone can build a new one by ordering it, you don't have to wait for one to come in or hunt for one, and you don't have to try to get your hands on one early before they run out. There are just as many as people want, and it doesn't feel as much of a special collector's items as the past Daytonas do. And there's also just a lot more of them around as well. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the 2018 Challenger Demon. This was a one-off model for 2018, with just 3300 units, but many Demon parts have trickled to other Challengers, like the 1320 and the Hellcat Red Eye. For example, the Hellcat Red Eye inherits many parts from the Demon, like electronics such as launch control, launch assist, line lock, and torque reserve, as well as power chiller and the after run chiller. And the Challenger 1320, which will be released in early 2019, also gets many of these same features as well, along with trans brake and torque reserve. So this makes sense from a business standpoint. Dodge has spent lots of money in research and development to create that Demon engine, and it makes sense to continue to use those features and other cars in the lineup to make them better, since the Demon is a one-off and is not going to be sold again. However, there's still that same issue of exclusivity. Demon owners might be bothered that the special engine features found in their rare and limited car are now available in models that aren't limited production, like the Hellcat Red Eye, or cost much less than the Demon did, like the Challenger 1320. I definitely think that these Demon engine features are no longer that exclusive or meaningful as they spread to many other models. To do a brief recap, I just think that Dodge is less exclusive and rare than they were in the past with their Challenger and Charger models. Most of the models look the same for 2019, the Daytona has been reduced to a common package, and even the exclusive Demon has its features going to other models. What do you guys think of all this? These are just my thoughts and opinions, let me know if you feel the same way or you totally disagree with me. Another important point to consider was suggested by subscriber Johnny P. He says that FCA is cleaning out their parts bin, using what they have left now to get rid of them for the new redesign of the Chargers and Challengers which are coming in a couple years. And that's definitely a huge possibility and would make a lot of sense. So that's it, hopefully you enjoyed the video and make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Mopar content. I'll see you next time.